when you're feeling down, what do you do? Do you put on your favorite song to lift your mood? Or do you pick a song that kind of meets you in the space that you're at? A lot of us have this behavior when we are feeling big emotions. Music speaks to the soul in a way that language never could. There's a reason for that. And there's a lot of soul healing in that. Join me this week as we take a look at sound healing and why this is such a beautiful, potent modality for self-care and self-discovery. Hi, I'm Adrian Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your menstrual health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function, and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are. I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. I am all about sharing things that are going to help you live your healthiest and best life. And one area that I haven't touched on nearly enough, but is really close to my heart, is sound healing. So you've probably noticed, or at least if you are plugged into the health and wellness space, that there has been a growing trend of sound healers, which is really exciting. Sound has been used since the beginning of time for all kinds of things. In the shamanic world, it invites spirits and the directions into ceremony. It is used to help dispel evil spirits. It helps with the grieving process. It helps with the healing process emotionally and physically. So there has been this understanding all throughout history that, well, the history of humankind anyway, that sound has healing capabilities. So this is one of those areas where I'm really glad that like the modern world is starting to get back in touch with this. It's kind of like seeing the revival of pelvic steaming while seeing the importance of music and sound being used in a therapeutic application is just one of those things where we have understood these things since the beginning of time. And then with the rise of traditional medicine, we have fallen out of touch with things that were always universally understood, again, since the beginning of time. And we're coming back in touch with those things because we're realizing that while we couldn't quantify it at the time, now there's actually scientific evidence of how different frequencies affect our bodies and how that translates into healing for the whole system, which is really beautiful. So I was drawn to sound as a healing modality well, over 10 years ago now, I would say, although I didn't actually start using it in practice full time until more recently, it always appealed to me. Most of us have a connection with music. So if you still your body and quiet your mind and you think about those moments in your life where you have been heartbroken or you've been really excited or you've maybe even been to a sporting event, Okay, so this is like brought in at a subtle level, right? Music moves us. We meet wherever we are with that same frequency. So in the sporting event example, 
think about all the music they play. They don't play things that are slow and sad. No, because they want to pump up the crowd and they want the crowd to be enthusiastic and cheer and yell and with gusto support the team that they came to see, right? So they choose music that is uplifting. Its frequency has a motivating, uplifting, energizing effect on the system. We might not directly think about it, but we tap our feet, we move our bodies because the music is usually something kind of dance related, right? That makes you want to dance. Think about listening to music that you're sitting still and you can't help it. Maybe you're listening to music at your desk and like you find yourself bobbing your head, right? Like that kind of thing, music, frequency, our body knows this. No matter what we speak for a language, music is a universal language. Understood all over the world. You can travel to a foreign country where you do not understand the words that are being spoken around you, but you listen to the music being played on the radio and you feel it. You just know. And then maybe you look up a translation of those lyrics later and go, wow, that is as sad as it felt like it was. I don't know if you've done that. I've totally done that. Maybe it's the musician in me, but music makes us feel things. It meets our resonant frequency wherever we're at. So it's like when we're sad and we listen to that sad, heartache kind of music right? We're meeting how we're feeling with the music that's coming out of our AirPods or however you're choosing to listen to your music. It's meeting you where you're at. You can use music to pull yourself up out of dark spaces. You can use it as a level of comfort to meet you where you're at. If you think about how music makes us feel an emotional imprint and connects us to moments in our lives. I don't know about you, but I have moments that if I listen to certain songs, they bring back those moments like they're happening in real time in terms of how I feel. One example, when I ran my first half marathon, one of the songs that was being played was Let's Get Loud. It was being played while we were all standing there in our waves, waiting to start the run. It was just before the gun went off, right? So like you have that anticipation. The music is uplifting and motivating. So Jennifer Lopez's Let's Get Loud, what was playing in that moment every single time. It's been nine years since I ran that race. And every single time I hear that song, I can picture myself, what I was wearing, the temperature that it was outside while I was standing, waiting in line, how it felt being in such a really big crowd of people with this big balloon arch and we were just waiting to go. Like I can bring all of that back in technicolor in my mind. Music and frequency has a way of doing that. Okay, so I spend so much time describing this because This is why sound healing is so powerful for people. And I've seen it done a bunch of different ways. Like a lot of times when people think sound healing, they think gongs, crystal bowls, right? That's where most people's brains go. Not everybody, but when I explain to people that sound healing is one of the modalities that I offer in my practice, most people go, oh, crystal bowls. Like those are the words that come out of their mouth and either they love them or they hate them and they're totally turned off by the idea of a sound bath (laughs) because I find that crystal bowls, they're very potent and sometimes the wobble in the field makes people feel weird. Sometimes people love them and they can't get enough of that wobble in the field. So it really depends on the story that you walk into the experience with. So I brought sound healing into my practice four years ago. And as somebody who spent her childhood as a musician, 
And I spent 20 years, almost 20 years, I would say, as a professional musician. It just resonated with me, not to be punny. I loved the idea of acupuncture. But when I really sat with it, I realized that the idea of sticking needles made me uncomfortable. So putting needles in other people made me feel uncomfortable. Not to mention, I had been through enough of the traditional medical model that anything invasive was just a total turnoff to me. So the idea of acupuncture, like I receive acupuncture and I love acupuncture. I think the sun rises and sets around my acupuncturist. But there are a lot of people because of trauma coming through the Western medical model for whatever reason are very turned off by the idea of being stuck with needles or they've tried acupuncture and they can't get past that anxiety around the fact they are going to have needles put in their body. So it, they're just not getting the full benefit of the treatment. This is where I really feel like sound healing shines and why I chose to become an acutonics practitioner because it's all of the wisdom of East Asian medicine and traditional Chinese medicine that you find in an acupuncture setting, but it's applied on the body, not into the body, <laughs> or around the body. So when people are very adverse to being touched for whatever reason, I can work in the field around the body. I can apply forks directly to the body. Not all sound healing modalities are like that. Some are very gong and bowl focused. There are some that work in terms of biofield tuning, meaning that they are forks that you use in the field around the body. So really close, but not actually touching the skin. And acutonics is actually applied to the body, which is a really cool sensation. You end up with vibration being applied directly to acupuncture points and moving energy along meridians. So there's a very visceral experience with sound. And then they took it a step further and they created a hamchine system that is all the same frequencies that you find in the forks that are applied to the body, but then you can go and you can fill spaces with sound. And that is really the core of what I offer for sound bath experiences as well. Do I use gongs? Yes. Do I use bowls? Yes. But I tend to use the seven metal Tibetan bowls because all of the alloys that are in those bowls have therapeutic healing properties. So a lot of how I approach this comes from a lot more of a shamanic kind of angle where what you're using for tools, the composition of what you're using for tools all brings and delivers therapeutic healing properties to the body, which is really cool. So this modality really appealed to me because it was non-invasive. Everything in my practice is non-invasive because let's face it, we have too much that goes in the body, <laughs> on the body, around the body. When we tend to go in for traditional diagnostics, sometimes just even your run-of-the-mill annual appointment can feel very invasive at a variety of levels, emotionally and physically. So keeping with the fact that I specialize in non-invasive techniques, pelvic steaming is non-invasive, acutonics is non-invasive, like the whole idea is to help you feel comfortable and safe in your body because that safety that coming out of the sympathetic into the parasympathetic is where the healing can happen because you're not being held in this place where you're like, oh, I feel like I have to fight everything that's coming at me. And you can go, oh, it's safe. This is great. So I start my treatments moving people out of that fight or flight down into that rest and digest so that the system can receive what it is that I'm putting in there. The beauty of the acutonic system, and maybe I should do an entire episode just about acutonics because the founders are incredible people. It was founded by a dean of an acupuncture school. There's so much research and thought and intentionality 
in this particular system that is really beautiful. And one of the reasons why it really spoke to me as a modality that I wanted to be in practice doing. But just kind of looking at sound healing collectively, even Western medicine is starting to kind of recognize at some level that vibration and frequency does have therapeutic benefit for the body. Did you know that you can actually supercharge your productivity? It's true. If you learn to work with your phases of your cycle instead of against the phases of your cycle, you actually become somewhat of a force of nature, not to be punny. Join me on March 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Cycle Productivity Secrets. I want to give you the 411 on how your cycle works the gifts that you are given in terms of your productivity and your health in each of these phases, and how you can become a superpower planning your workflow with the phases of your cycle. The link to enroll is in the show notes. And now back to the show. I mean, I just think about in college, I was starting to have a lot of trouble with tendonitis in my shoulder. Like I said, I was a musician. I played violin. That repetitive motion really got to me after a while when I was playing professionally and, you know, playing shows at night and trying to complete all my playing, conducting requirements during the day. It really took a toll on my shoulders, particularly my right shoulder. So they would put the steroid gel. Okay, so anybody who's listening to this that's uh, Western trained, I'm probably going to totally butcher what the actual technical terms are because, again, I'm not a Western practitioner. But they would put a steroid gel on my shoulder and then they would use frequency in the wand and they would deliver the steroid cream through vibration and frequency down into the joint itself to try to deal with the inflammation that I was battling in my shoulder. Again, cannot remember for the life of me the technical term, but that was how it was delivered. There was frequency being used to deliver the medication to the spot that I was having issues. So there are aspects of the traditional model that do understand that frequency has a positive effect on the body. When you're looking at it in terms of sound healing, it's like communicating with the body in the language that it knows innately, which I think is really cool. When I apply forks to people's bodies, I can tell where they are stuck in their system. And when I say stuck, they might have pain there. They might have a lot of muscle tightness there without even asking the person because the forks buzz differently in my hands. When I'm at points on the body where things aren't moving smoothly, So Chinese medicine, for example, understands pain as something not moving effectively in the body. It could be, it could be emotions. It could be energetic. It could be that fluids are not moving appropriately through a particular area, or it could be a combination of both. So if things aren't moving really well in the system, it's going to literally create a different response in terms of applying frequency to it, it's going to be met with a dissonance. So the fork in your hand starts to vibrate almost like friction against that particular spot on the body. And it tells the practitioner, oh, hey, here's an area maybe I should ask more questions about, or here's an area that we need to do a little bit more work on. Sometimes I'll put bowls on that part of the body and I'll strike the bowl until the bowl starts to vibrate the way it's supposed to, meaning that there aren't any muted tones. It doesn't sound like somebody keeps putting their hand on the bowl and muting its expression. Sometimes you're missing overtones. So when you're, when you play, particularly a Tibetan bowl, you're going to hear the note that the bowl was designed to play. But then you're going to hear other pitches that kind of float in over the top of it. Those are called overtones. And there aren't many (laughs) when somebody is 
hung up in a particular area, whether they're experiencing physical pain or they're just really tight, like when you get like neck tension or or maybe your low back feels really tight and you're having a hard time to touch your toes, that's when I see quite a lot. And I see that quite a lot right around people's periods, right? So as you're in the late stages of the luteal phase and things aren't moving quite as well because it's you're right on the brink of your period starting, for example, that particular part of the body can be kind of problematic. So it's not uncommon for me to take a smaller Tibetan bowl with a little bit deeper pitch to it and put it right on the low back and just keep tapping it while I'm working on other parts of the body because that vibration in that spot helps to break up any stagnation. It helps to move anything that's not flowing smoothly through that particular area. And it gives people relief from the discomfort that they're experiencing in that particular area. There are certain points in the acupuncture system that deal with either things that are emotionally not moving well or things that are physically not moving well in the body. And using forks on those points and helping to get things to move, you're using vibration to break apart what's stuck and help it to move effectively through the system. I love the fact that energy goes where intention goes and energy flows where intention goes. And I think it's one of the most beautiful parts about sound healing is frequency travels. In sound travels. So this is just like when you are standing near a lake and somebody says, hey, keep your voice down. Your voice carries. It's going to scare all the fish. All right. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that. <laughs> I used to go fishing with my grandparents and my grandmother used to say that all the time. She's like, you're going to scare all the fish away. Keep your voice down. <laughs> but it's because over water, your voice travels that much easier and that much further because water helps to carry sound. Our bodies are such a large percentage of water. Apply a little bit of vibration to the body. It travels, man, all through the system. It speaks to the whole system. I love using the eight extraordinary vessels when I'm working with people because I'm applying forks to two points on the body, but then the vibration, the frequency, that sound is carried along the whole system working through anywhere where it might get stuck. And people sit up off the table and their faces look totally different. I have people, and I, again, I love acupuncture. I, I am a devout acupuncture every month, a couple times a month. I go frequently, okay? But I have had people who have come from acupuncture over to a sound healing modality because they're getting similar benefits, but it just feels so different in their system than acupuncture does. It's not that one is superior to the other. It's that the physical, visceral experience with it is very different. I think about sitting on top of a speaker in college while somebody was playing music that, you know, we were trying to motivate ourselves through a study session, right? And that vibration coming up through the speaker changes how you feel in your body. Go to a concert. Think about how the vibration of the concert makes your body feel different. So sound healing is so potent. It's so natural. Our bodies have always communicated this way. And we're using a modality that speaks to the way that our bodies communicate without language. So if you haven't had the opportunity to try sound healing, I would highly recommend it. Because sound healing has the ability to get into spaces that other therapies can't, or at least that's been my experience as a practitioner. I have seen people find their voice. I have seen marriages repaired. I have seen marriages that should have dissolved years prior dissolve. I have seen people change jobs and move into what their soul's true calling is. A job that doesn't feel like a job, it's now a passion and a calling. 
and it lights them up inside in a way that they never could have imagined. So sound healing helps us to heal on so many levels. It helps us to grieve. It helps us to celebrate. It helps us to come into right relationship with ourself on all of the levels, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And the beautiful part about sound healing is wherever you are in your journey, maybe you're coming in because you're having period pain. Great. We'll get to the root cause of why you're having that period pain, physical, emotional, or spiritual. It doesn't matter. Sound gets into those spaces and provides this transformative healing experience at a level that people just don't even realize until they start to engage with it. It's one of the reasons why it's one of my most favorite appointments to do during the day because people lay down looking one way. They sit up looking and feeling completely different and it changes how they go about their day. You know, for people who are very much in that spiritual manifestation side of things, it literally helps you to call in the frequencies of what you want because now you're meeting your vibration with the vibration of this thing that you're trying to call into your life. I mean, magical is, it sounds like such a lame term for how transformative and how powerful this is. So, whether you are near me in Seacoast, New Hampshire, or if you are near some place where you can find somebody who is really gifted in sound healing, I would highly recommend you reach out to them because if you are experiencing cycle-related challenges or you're in that perimenopausal phase of your life where you feel kind of like your symptoms are spiraling out of control and you're like, I don't know, I woke up today feeling completely different than I did yesterday and I don't know how I'm going to feel tomorrow and I don't like how any of this is making me feel. You know, all of those difficulties that we experience on a day-to-day basis can be met in a sound healing space. People know, they just know that sound feels good in their body, whether it's in a sound bath experience, if you kind of want to put your toe in the water and test it out ahead of time, or if you want to go right into an individual practitioner session, whatever it is that you choose to do, there is medicine for you in a sound healing space. And I'm so excited to have you comment in the Reproductive Listeners podcast group on Facebook, hear how your sound healing experience is going. If you would like to work with me, my contact information is in the show notes. Or, you know, if you're interested in something like Acutonics, you can always go to acutonics.com. They have a list of practitioners and you can find a practitioner local to your area. Although many practitioners also do virtual sessions, I do. And there are quite a few that do as well. So while it may not be forks on the body and we're working with it in the field, you can absolutely get therapeutic benefit from sound healing. So enjoy the journey. The next time you turn on your favorite song and you think about how it makes you feel, realize that there is healing in listening to music that feels good in your body. And maybe you do pull in a sound healing modality as part of your regular self-care routine. I offer self-care classes on a regular basis. So definitely check my course offerings because I offer self-care at least once a quarter so that you can take some of these forks home and apply them to your own body and your own family. So there's lots of opportunities to be able to harness and utilize and get the benefits of sound healing, even if it's right in your own home. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peristeam hydrotherapist and acutonics practitioner, herbalist, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizarry of Moon Essence LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment for one-on-one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. 
Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation. Like and follow us at Moon Essence Me on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.